Hello, in this session we shall learn about the basic organization of the trigeminal nerve and discuss the distribution and branches of the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve. As you would know that the innovation to the face and the mouth comes primarily from two sources. The trigeminal nerve provides a sensory innovation to the face and the mouth whilst the facial nerve is primarily responsible for innovation of the muscles of facial expression. The trigeminal nerve as you know is the fifth cranial nerve and originates from four nuclei in the brain including three sensory nuclei and one motor nucleus. Starting in the midbrain the mesencephalic nucleus which is related to proprioception in the region of the pons the principal sensory nucleus which is related to light touch sensation and the spinal nucleus which extends from the medulla oblongata down to the upper two three segments of the spinal cord and this is concerned with pain and temperature sensations in the distribution of the trigeminal nerve and you also have the motor nucleus medial to the principal sensory nucleus at the level of the pons the sensory nuclei merge to form a sensory root and the motor root uh, develops from the motor nucleus separately and these motor and sensory roots of the trigeminal nerve are comparable to the dorsal and ventral roots of the spinal nerves which are sensory and motor respectively. Now within the middle cranial fossa the sensory nuclei they merge to form a sensory root uh, and expand as the trigeminal ganglion. Now remember a ganglion refers to collection of nerve cell bodies outside the gray matter of the spinal cord. Now this trigeminal ganglion is located in a depression at the apex of the petrous temporal bone in a fold of dura matter known as the trigeminal cave. And from the trigeminal ganglion the three main roots of the trigeminal nerve emerge the ophthalmic, the maxillary and the mandibular divisions. The ophthalmic and the maxillary divisions are purely sensory whilst the mandibular division is a mixed branch and we shall look at these in more detail in the next slides. The three main divisions of the trigeminal nerve include the ophthalmic nerve which is also referred to as V1, the maxillary nerve V2 and the mandibular division which is V3. The ophthalmic and the maxillary divisions after emerging from the trigeminal ganglion travel in the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus and the ophthalmic division leaves the skull through the superior orbital fissure whilst the maxillary division leaves the skull through the foramen rotundum and finally the mandibular division leaves the skull through the foramen ovale. So this image depicts the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus and you can see some very important structures including the internal carotid artery, the third cranial nerve, the oculomotor, the fourth trochlear, the sixth, the abducens and these three nerves are primarily responsible for innervation of the extraocular muscles. The oculomotor innervates all extraocular muscles excluding the superior oblique and the lateral rectus. The superior oblique is innervated by the trochlea and the lateral rectus by the abducens nerve. And you can also see the two divisions of the trigeminal nerve, the ophthalmic and the maxillary nerve in the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus and we've already discussed that they leave the skull through separate foramina. In the previous slide we've discussed that. The ophthalmic nerve is the smallest division of the trigeminal nerve and is purely sensory. It arises from the trigeminal ganglion, travels in the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus 
and leaves the skull through the superior orbital fissure and divides into three branches the frontal the lacrimal and the nasociliary branches these are the three main branches of the ophthalmic nerve and all are purely sensory so this image depicts the various openings in the orbit uh, including the superior orbital fissure the optic canal and the inferior orbital fissure for the minute we shall focus on the superior orbital fissure and the optic canal and we shall discuss the inferior orbital fissure when we uh, discuss the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve now if you look at the optic canal two main structures pass through it obviously the optic nerve the second cranial nerve and the ophthalmic artery and then you also note this green outline of the annular tendinous ring which provides attachment to the extraocular muscles of the eyeball responsible for movement of the eyeball and this annular tendinous ring divides the uh, superior orbital fissure into several compartments and it is uh, usual to describe the structures passing through the superior orbital fissure as those passing above the annular tendinous ring through the annular tendinous ring and below the annular tendinous ring so starting superiorly the superior ophthalmic vein the lacrimal and frontal divisions of the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve the recurrent meningeal branch of the ophthalmic artery and then also the trochlear nerve which is the fourth cranial nerve structures passing through the annular tendinous ring include the two divisions of the oculomotor nerve the superior and inferior divisions the third cranial nerve the nasociliary division of the ophthalmic branch of the trigeminal that's the third branch frontal and lacrimal pass above the annular tendinous ring and also the sixth cranial nerve the abducens nerve and finally the structures passing below the annular tendinous ring include the inferior ophthalmic veins now we can look at the three branches of the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve starting with the frontal division which is the largest branch of the ophthalmic nerve and after emerging through the superior orbital fissure it divides into two branches beneath the roof of the orbit the supraorbital nerve which is lateral and often emerges through a supraorbital foramen or the or a supraorbital notch on the superior orbital rim uh, and provides innervation to the skin of the scalp as far back as the lambdoid suture the associated pericranium also innervates the frontal sinus which is one of the four pairs of paranasal sinuses and the upper eyelid mainly the lateral part whereas the supratrochlear nerve is medial and smaller and provides innervation to the skin of the lower part of the forehead close to the midline the conjunctiva and the upper eyelid so these are the two branches of the frontal division of the ophthalmic nerve which is the largest branch of the ophthalmic nerve the second branch of the ophthalmic nerve is the lacrimal branch which is the smallest of the three branches of the ophthalmic again enters the orbit through the superior orbital fissure and moves along the lateral wall of the orbit to end in the upper eyelid and it provides innervation to the lacrimal gland which is located in the suprolateral portion of the orbit and it also innervates the adjacent conjunctiva and the upper eyelid now this lacrimal branch as we shall see when we discuss the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve receives a communicating branch from the zygomatico temporal branch of the maxillary nerve which is carrying post ganglionic parasympathetic skeletomotor fibers to the lacrimal gland however 
These fibers do not originate in the zygomaticotemporal branch of the maxillary. In fact, these fibers originate in the greater petrosal branch of the facial, which joins the deep petrosal to form the nerve of the pterygoid canal to provide the preganglionic parasympathetic fibers, which uh, join the pterygopalatine ganglion, and the postganglionic fibers are distributed through the maxillary the zygomatic, the zygomatic or temporal branch, which then communicates with the lacrimal branch of the ophthalmic to finally reach the lacrimal gland and provide scretomotor innovation to the lacrimal gland. Finally, the third division of the ophthalmic branch is the nasociliary nerve, which is intermediate in size compared to the frontal and lacrimal branches and has five divisions. Firstly, there is a communicating branch to the ciliary ganglion, which basically contains sensory fibers from the eyeball via the short ciliary nerves, which pass without interruption through the ciliary ganglion. Ciliary ganglion is one of the four parasympathetic ganglia uh, and is discussed in detail in relation to the uh, eyeball in my presentation on the facial nerve. The second branch is the long ciliary nerve which distributes to the ciliary body, iris and cornea and it also contains sympathetic fibers which are post ganglionic fibers related to the superior cervical sympathetic ganglion and provides, provide innovation to the dilator pupillae muscle of the iris and responsible for pupillary dilatation and it also innovates the cornea providing with general sensory fibers. The third branch is the infratrochlear nerve just like you have the supratrochlear branch in the frontal division of the ophthalmic the infratrochlear originates from the nasociliary branch of the ophthalmic and innervates the lacrimal sac, the conjunctiva, eyelids, mainly the lower eyelid and the upper lateral part of the nose. Then posterior ethmoidal nerve which provides innervation to the ethmoidal and sphenoidal air sinuses. And finally is the anterior ethmoidal nerve which supplies anterior ethmoidal cells via the ethmoidal foramen and then enters the nasal cavity through a slit on the side of crista gali, supplying adjacent nasal mucosa in the upper third of the nasal cavity and finally terminates as the external nasal branch supplying the skin of the nasal dorsum. So this is the termination of the anterior ethmoidal branch of the nasociliary uh, and this termination is known as the external nasal branch. Now in this image we can see the main branches of the ophthalmic nerve, the supraorbital and supratrochlear branches of the frontal division. The smallest is the lacrimal which provides innervation to the lacrimal gland and then you have the nasociliary with its branches like the posterior ethmoidal, the anterior ethmoidal and the infratrochlear shown in this image. And finally this is another image where we can look at the main branches of the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve which enters the orbit through the superior orbital fissure, divides into the frontal branch with supraorbital supratrochlear nerves. Then you have the, the lacrimal branch which innervates the lacrimal gland and receives a communicating branch from the zygomaticotemporal branch of the maxillary carrying postganglionic parasympathetic fibers to the lacrimal gland. And then you have the intermediate nasociliary nerve which includes the short ciliary nerves, the long ciliary nerves, the infratrochlear and also the posterior and anterior ethmoidal nerves. 
Now, one branch which wasn't discussed is the meningeal branch of the ophthalmic nerve. On this image, it is shown here. Precisely, it's known as the recurrent tentorial branch. On this image, it is shown as if it emerges from the ophthalmic after it has exited the superior orbital fissure, but more commonly, it is given off from the ophthalmic division before it exits the skull through the superior orbital fissure and it provides innovation to dura mater in the anterior cranial fossa, mainly the Fox cerebri and the tentorium cerebri. So here is a summary of the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve. Has three divisions, largest being frontal, divides into supraorbital, supratrochlear. The smallest branch is the lacrimal, which provides innervation to the lacrimal gland. And the intermediate in size is the nasociliary with long and short ciliary branches, the infratrochlear branch, the posterior ethmoidal branch, and the anterior ethmoidal branch which finally terminates as the external nasal nerve. So we can say that the ophthalmic division is purely sensory and provides innervation to the scalp, upper one third of the face, including skin of the forehead, the circumorbital area, the nose, and it also provides innervation to structures in the eyeball, the frontal, sphenoidal, and ethmoidal paranasal air sinuses. And you can consolidate your knowledge on trigeminal nerve as well as uh, the anatomy on the whole. Uh, these are two good texts, uh, Anatomy for Dental Students by Johnson and Moore and Netter's Head and Neck Anatomy for Dentistry.